All right. So hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining me for this fun workshop. I'm Nicole from Be Well at Work Wellness, and welcome to Creativity and Your Well-Being, Episode 1, Homemade Gifts, Part 1. So Kim and I had so much fun teaching this class during the spring semester that we had to bring it back for the fall. And when we were trying to think of a theme, we came to, you know, what better theme than to talk about the holidays. So I don't know about you, but time seems to be running this semester. So it's October 15th. Halloween is just around the corner. Before you know it, we're going to get into Thanksgiving and then the December holidays. It's crazy. So um, in today's class, we'll be talking about, or I'll be teaching two homemade guests. So as I was saying, as people were arriving, there are a plethora of different homemade gifts you can make. Some things very simple, some things more advanced, but there are so many different things you can do. Homemade gifts are a great way to add your personal touch on something, make gifts come from the heart, make them more unique, and also with everything, all the crazy things happening with the supply chain um, because of the pandemic, who knows, it might make your holiday shopping list a little bit easier too. Um, a lot of stores are telling people to get started early, but why buy something when you can make it yourself? So um, in today's class, we will be going over a way to make mugs. So mugs are something everyone or most people use every day, whether you're a coffee drinker, tea drinker, hot water drinker, or just put anything in a mug, cereal. I don't know about you, I eat cereal in a mug sometimes. Mugs are something that a lot of people can use. So we're gonna be taking a plain white mug, decorating it, and um, making it personalized and something really easy and cute to give as a gift. Um, I'll also be giving some ideas of ways to kind of dress it up and give it as a gift package. And the second craft we're going to do is a trinket tray made of air dry clay. So air dry clay specifically because you don't have to bake it. It's super user friendly and it cooks for you overnight while you sleep. So who doesn't love that? So if you are crafting along, I um, created a PDF of the instructions in the BCAL. Um, I think it's in the BCAL if you um, RSVP to this event, but I think Kim dropped it in the chat earlier. Oh, there she goes. Thank you, Kim. And um, if you'd like to follow along, you can click that as well. So we are going to start with the Sharpie mugs. So let me push this stuff aside. So for your work surface, um, if you are working on a tabletop, I always like to line it with um, newspaper to make sure I don't spill. I'm actually going to pull this parchment paper off right now because that is for our clay craft. So you'll need a plain white ceramic mug and oil-based Sharpie markers. So specifically oil-based Sharpies because regular Sharpie markers will not become permanent on the mug and the oil-based paint marker makes it so that the glaze on the ceramic mug and the ink of the paint melds together when you put it in the oven. So you don't need all these colors. I just happened to buy a multi-pack. You can definitely make this monochromatic where you can just use black or just use another color or you can do as many colors as you like. These also come in fun metallic shades like gold and silver. So that's a really nice way to add your personal touch. Um, let's see. And as far as decorating goes, you can do so many different things with a design. So you can make it as intricate or as simple as you want. Um, I was taking inspiration from just a quick Google search of DIY Sharpie mugs, and there are so many different ideas to choose from. If you have Pinterest, that's also a great resource. Um, but for simple things, I've seen things such as even just a simple smiley face, a happy face, a winking face, maybe a happy face on one side, a sad face on the other. Um, as far as, let's see, personalization, if you're giving it as a gift, an easy way or an easy design would be a 
initial, so the first or last initial of the person's name. You can just draw the letter on there and decorate it with whatever you want. So for stenciling, you can either freehand with these. Um, paint pens tend to be a little easier because it's not a paintbrush and it just, you can use it just like a pencil. Or you can take painter's tape and outline or block off areas that you want to stay white. So if you were here for the spring class, I taught a canvas craft where we made little geometric triangles in painter's tape, painted in the triangles, removed the tape, and we had this cute design. You can do the same thing on the mug. But let's see. Hmm. I think for today's class, I'm going to do this design that I saw where it says, um, life happens, but coffee helps. So I'm going to try to do that along with you. So I'm going to start with black today. So if you have the brand new uh, brand new Sharpie paint pens, um, if you follow the instructions on the marker, it says that you'll need to push down on the felt tip first and then shake it a bunch. And then I found that on a piece of scratch paper, you kind of have to pump it up and down a few times. So I've already used this one, but let me use. You kind of have to go like this to kind of get the paint flowing in the tip. So if you're following along and you just open your markers, you'll see that the tip is white, but you kind of have to shake it and pump it on a piece of scratch paper a few times so that the paint saturates the tip. So let's see. When I was talking about that um, happy face design, I kind of made you want to do that today too. But, mm, no, we're going to change it. We're going to do a smiley face today. I think I'm going to do a happy face on one side and a sad face on the other side to represent myself before and after coffee. So, oh, wait, I forgot. You want to start with a clean mug. So make sure you wash and dry your mug with dish soap um, because for this to work best, you want it to be free of dirt and oil. I also have some rubbing alcohol. Um, I'm going to put a little bit on a paper towel. And this is just a good way to make sure you get all the excess oils and dirt off your mug. All right. Has anyone ever done this before, actually? If you have, feel free to say so in the chat. Okay, I'm going to give my mug a good shake. And let's start with, let's do a happy face. So I'm going to get nice, I have to get close to my mug. So let's see. That's one eyeball. Another eyeball. And we're going to draw a smiley face. So I think I'm going to go over the mouth a little more. So when I did this a few days ago, I found that in the oven, the color tone changes a little bit because of the heat. So for the colors to remain a little more opaque, um, if you want the colors to stay nice and dark, you can go over your lines a few more times. And you kind of wanted to let it dry a little bit in between, otherwise it gets kind of streaky. All right, so I know it's super silent now, but crafting, as we talked about in our spring session, crafting and doing art has effects similar to that of meditation. So it releases stress, lowers your blood pressure, helps you feel a little more at ease. So if you're doing this at home after this class, 
maybe play some nice relaxing music in the background. All right, so I've got my smiley face. Going over the mouth a few more times. Okay, yay. So, and then I'm gonna flip it over and I think I want to do a sad face on the other side. So I'm gonna let this, give it a few seconds to dry. So if you're giving this as a gift, another fun idea you could do is you create the mug for whoever you're giving it to and then you can make kind of a little gift basket in a way, maybe buy some hot cocoa mix, um, candy canes maybe appropriate for the season, or earlier for fall, maybe some cider mix, some apples, some cinnamon sticks. You can stick it inside the mug, wrap it all up, and there you go. It's a nice gift. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do a sad face. There are also designs where you can even draw on the handle part. So see how it kind of makes half a heart. I've seen some people do half a heart here and then a full heart here. So still many different ideas. As far as where to get plain mugs, um, I wrote it in the description, but you can get these super affordable mugs um, at Dollar Tree for a dollar or oftentimes a lot of people have plain white mugs that are sitting around at home. Um, Kim and I were chatting before our class and she says she actually had a mug where the design faded off um, after a while and then now she has a plain mug she can decorate. So what a great way to upcycle. Okay, so I'm gonna do a sad face. So if you outlined or if you sketched your design on with pencil before, I did that with a mug I tried a few days ago. And sometimes you don't end up drawing, fully coloring in over the pencil that you sketched the design on with. So I found that it came off with just a Q-tip or a cotton swab dipped in water and it comes right off before you put it in the oven. Okay, so I'm going to go over this a few, a few times. Maybe I'll put this here. Okay. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. I always say there's no right or wrong way to do arts and crafts. Beauty, is it beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Right? But I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do art. How you express yourself is how you express yourself. So let me go over the math a few more times. Also, another idea I thought of while doing this is in addition to giving, um, giving this gift, like giving an object as a gift, you can also give the gift of time. So I was trying to brainstorm, what am I gonna get for my huge family? I have so many cousins. I thought of what if I held a little paint night, or if anyone's ever been to a place like Color Me Mine, where I would provide the supplies, so I would gift an experience, or you can even host a paint night for Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, or friend or family holiday parties, and everyone can just gather around the table, do this together. You can pop them in the oven, and everyone has a take-home gift, but it's a nice way to kind of get together and everyone can have a little meditative art session. Okay, I'm gonna go over this a few more times. Okay, so here we have, we got a happy face and we got a sad face. Me before coffee, me after coffee. <laughs> Just kidding, maybe not. Okay, so after you have your design, like I said, you can make this as intricate or as simple as you want. You can even add as many colors as you want. Um, but I think 
I will leave this like this for now. Maybe come back to it later if I decide to add something else. So after you've drawn your design or painted your design, you're going to want to leave this mug to set for 24 hours before you bake it. So just leave it off to the side, forget about it, and 24 hours you can come back and bake it. So when you bake it, um, you do not want to preheat your oven. So you want to pop your mug into a cold oven. So this allows the mug to slowly heat up with the oven to try to prevent cracking both in, in the design and in the mug. So you put into a cold oven, set your oven to 350 degrees, let it come to temperature. Once your oven beeps and says it's at 350, let it sit in there for 30 minutes. Turn your oven off. I let mine sit in the warm oven, so the oven that's off but is cooling off for an additional 30 minutes and then carefully took it out and let it finish cooling on the counter. So I'll show you the one that I did a few days ago. So I made this one a few days ago. I had seen this on a mug, so I decided to draw it on myself. I thought it was funny. It says insert eye roll here. And on the other side, I drew the eye roll emoji. So something fun, but uh, brings a little joy to your morning cup of coffee. So after baking the, this one, I have a few tips and tricks that I learned. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but in areas where I didn't go over the paint, see in the word roll, it kind of faded a little bit. Um, but over here, where I went over the paint a few more times, it stayed more opaque. So I think, for my personal note, next time I think I would want to go over it a little more to keep it a little more bold. But if you like the faded look, you can go ahead and do that. And this is just a sample of what a design you can do if you had colored something in. Um, there are also variations in bake times. So I did this for... 30 minutes at 350 degrees, or you could do a slower bake. So you could bake it at 250, but you'd have to keep it in the oven for 1.5 to two hours, which is not the most energy conserving route. But um, I read that the color tone shifts a little less. So the blue got slightly darker, but it's still a very pretty blue. And the yellow got a little bit darker too, but it still looks good to me. So if you felt so inclined to try the longer bake, but for um, lower temperature, longer time, you can go ahead and try to do that. All right. So now I have two little mugs. If we have time later, maybe I'll add more to this. But okay. But remember, don't bake it yet. Let it sit for 24 hours and then bake it tomorrow if you're crafting along with us today. Okay, now we are going to move on to our second craft of the day. But before we do that, does anyone have any questions about the mugs? If anyone happens to be crafting along live right now, anybody care to share what design they decided to do? Feel free to type it in the chat. Kim, I know you're crafting along, so not to call you out, but I wonder what you're doing. <gasps> wow! Oh, Kim did a K. That's awesome. Wow, that looks so good, Kim. So Kim took the suggestion. I know you can't see because I have this on spotlight right now, but she put a K for Kim and then decorated the outside. It looks so good. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second craft. So for this, we're going to be working with clay. If you happen to be working on a kitchen counter, um, you probably don't need this setup, but I'm working on my dining table right now, so I have my newspaper down, and I'm actually going to use parchment paper just so that the clay doesn't pick up the ink from the newspaper. But if you're on a kitchen counter, you get a clean kitchen counter, you can do this without the newspaper. So for air dry clay, let me just put this to hold. Okay, so for air dry clay, um, I linked three different brands um, in the instruction sheet. So I linked Crayola, DOS, and Sculpey. All three options work great. They all work the same. They're all a very a soft clay, 
that um, is malleable while you work with it, but then will dry overnight. So it's super easy and you don't have to bake it. So for this, I'm using the DOS brand, but any of those brands can work. So um, you will need your air dry clay. You'll need a bowl around the size of the clay that you're aiming to make. It can be as big or as small as you want. And you'll need a good old fashioned butter knife. Okay, so you're gonna take your air dry clay. I'm gonna chop off a piece of clay for what I might need. Uh, maybe it'll go a little bit bigger, just so I have some extra. Okay. So you want to take your clay and you're going to mold it into a ball. So for this craft, same thing as with the Sharpie mugs, you can hold, just like you can hold a paint knife, you can hold a, uh, what is it, like a pottery or ceramics knife, um, a great holiday activity or even just general gathering activity for you and your loved ones. Okay, so we have our ball. Then you'll need a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, um, you can use a wine bottle or any large bottle um, to help you roll out your clay. I've definitely used a wine bottle before and it works perfectly. So we're gonna roll it out to a nice flat pizza shape. So for this um, craft, I recommended white, but air dry clay also comes in other colors. If you can def if you're aiming to go for like a terracotta or a brown or a gray, you can definitely do that. But I find white works best when you're trying to paint. Okay, so we're gonna roll it out. So you want to get roll it out to your desired thickness. So if you whether you want a thinner tray or a thicker tray or bowl, um, that's the kind of thickness you want to go for. If it's rolling out too thin and you wanted it thicker, you can go ahead and add more clay on top and then roll it out. So you're going to want to roll it out to the size of the bowl you're using as a mold. Go a little bit bigger. Um, both of these activities are also great to do with kids. If you have kids, have relatives, have friends with kids, also a really great activity for them as well. Okay, then you're going to take your bowl, um, the bowl that you're going to use as a mold, um, and you're going to turn it upside down on your piece of clay. Then we take our butter knife and you're going to carefully trace around the exterior of the bowl to create your tray shape. So slowly going to bring it around. And the best part about this is if you mess up, you can just roll the clay back into a ball and repeat the process. So these are meant to be done, no pressure. Just make sure, or they're meant to be stress relieving, right? So just have fun with it. Don't put pressure on yourself. Anything you create will be beautiful. Okay, so we bring it all the way around carefully. Then we are going to carefully remove the excess clay. Put this aside and then carefully flip the bowl right side up. You want to be careful with this because the bowl tends to stick to the clay. 
So just watch your fingers. Ta-da! Then you are going to take the clay and press it into the bowl um, to get the, your desired shape. So the, the what's it called? So the higher you keep it, the more shallow your bowl will be, but the deeper you press it into the bowl, the deeper your bowl will be. So I'm just going to slightly lift the edges so that it slides in. And carefully pinch it down or press it down into the bowl. So I'm gonna aim for a shallower bowl, so more of a plate with high edges. But if you want, you can press it all the way down. So if you can see, um, because I used parchment paper, it created lines, whereas if you were doing this on a kitchen countertop, it would be flat. But I kind of like the look of the lines. It adds, it gives it a little character. Also, if you find your clay becomes kind of hard to work with because we have exposed it to the air and it's air dry clay, you can take some water, a little bit of water on your finger to moisten the edges of the clay. So let's say you accidentally maybe stuck your fingernail into the clay when you were flipping it. Just take a little bit of water and you can use it to kind of make the clay a little softer to work the edges of the clay. You can also use it to kind of smooth the edges too. Maybe if it's jagged from the edges of the knife. Yeah or take some clay and try to smooth out some of the edges on the inside. But I'll take the look of the parchment paper crinkles. Like I said, character. Okay. There you go. So let me turn it so you can kind of see. So I know this kind of looks gray, but this, this particular brand starts a little gray, but it will dry white. So this also involves a little drying time. You're gonna take your molded clay trinket tray and you're gonna leave it to dry overnight. So note on the drying times, if your clay bowl is on the thicker side, so if you rolled out your clay to a, mm, maybe this or thicker, it might need more than overnight, um, depending on the thickness. If it's thinner, it might need less, maybe just a few hours, but um, just give it as long as it needs. Okay, so we're going to put this aside and come back to it tomorrow, come back to it tomorrow. But I've done one ahead of time, so it's exactly the same. I did this one yesterday. So after it dries, um, I took another butter knife, a clean butter knife, and carefully ran it, very carefully, along the edge of the bowl where the clay meets the bowl to kind of loosen it up. So I did that already and then it makes it so the bowl pops out. Ta-da! So cute, right? Okay, so you want to make sure it's completely dry before you start painting it. If you find that it's still a little moist, you can go ahead and pop it back in the bowl and leave it to dry some um, for more time. So you might notice the edges are a little bit jagged. So you can definitely leave it like this if you want a more rustic looking bowl, or you can take sandpaper or even an old nail file that you're no longer using and use it to file along the edges. Okay, that's what the bottom looks like. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to leave them like that for now, but I'm going to paint it right now, but I can always come back with a nail file or sandpaper and roll it out. So after you've let your bowl or tray set overnight, you can come in and paint it. So two options for painting. You can either do acrylic paints in a paintbrush, or since we use paint markers, for our other crafts, you can also use paint markers to paint it. So you don't have to paint this, you can definitely leave it as is, um, or you can paint it as much as you want. Okay, ooh, actually I forgot one more thing. Um, I wrote this in the note on the decal, 
but this, so this is the wet one. You can also try variations of clay before you let it set. So if you happen to have cookie cutters at home, you can take your spare clay that you've rolled out, cut out a star, a heart, or whatever shape you have as a cookie cutter. You can place that on top of the wet clay and it'll dry with it. You can turn this into a ring dish by shaping a cone or um, maybe even an animal or a tree, but a cone out of the air dry clay, stick it on top and it can be a ring dish. But I wanted to try another trick I saw. So I'm just gonna do this in the bowl since I already popped it in here. You can even take a sharp object like a unbent paper clip, a push pin, the end of your butter knife, and you can carve things into the clay before you leave it to dry. So you can carve a letter, you can carve a shape, carve a smiley face. Um, I also went to Google and Pinterest looking for inspiration. So I saw this design where they put little stars. So I'm gonna try that on camera with you all today. So I'm actually gonna take this guy back out. Cause it's still very malleable. We haven't let it set yet. And I'm gonna try carving little stars into the clay. Again, you don't have to do this. Just one of the many variations you can do with this project. So I'm gonna go and carve little stars with the butter knife. Being just pressing ever so lightly so you don't go all the way through the clay. Making little indents. I don't know if you can see that. I just did a little four point star, four lines, super simple. If you have stamps too, like a clean, clean stamps with no ink, or I suppose you could do it with black ink. You can also use those to emboss the clay as well. Okay, let's add a few more. There we go. Maybe one more over here. Okay, so you can see, I'll lift this up slightly. I carved little tiny four point stars into the clay. So then now I'll gently pop it back into the bowl. And we're going to let that set. So now we're going to pop, pop back to the one that I did yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to try a design that combines both the paint markers and the acrylic paint. Again, you can just Google or Pinterest different ideas. It could be as simple or as intricate as you want. So I think I'm going to take some of this paint. This is acrylic paint. Some here. Paintbrush. And I think I'm going to take the paint and do paint half of it this aqua color. Mm, okay. I accidentally splattered 
a little more paint on the other side, and that's not what I intended, but we're going to go with it. Following what I said about no right or wrong way to do art, right? Probably grab a little more paint. So this dish can be used as, I called it a trinket tray, but because it can be used for a bunch of things. So it can be used as a key holder you can put it somewhere right inside the doorway of your house a central place where you put keys it can be used for jewelry um, set your rings earrings anything in here um, if you wanted you don't even have to put it back in the bowl you can let it dry flat and i've seen people use it as a place to put a candle so it becomes kind of like a little more like a plate and then they put their candle on it while they burn it. Okay. So, we're going on the fly here. I originally had it intended to put some of this paint on the other side, but we're going to go with it. So, I'm going to make little sprinkles. Let's see. Just going to turn it into little lines. Maybe if you gave this as a set, the trinket tray and the mug. You can do matching an initial key ring or jewelry tray, or key tray or jewelry tray, and an initial mug. Um, the mugs or these trays are also great wedding or engagement gifts. You can do his and hers, hers and hers, his and his. Okay. Then add a few more dots. So once you're done painting, as much or as little as your heart desires, the good part about this is you just leave it to dry and then it's ready to go. Um, in the instruction sheet, I also, I listed a few more ideas. If you are a fan of glitter, you can add glitter on the wet paint and let it dry. You can also add glitter using glue and then seal the whole thing with Mod Podge What's so funny is I had ideas of the mug and the tray I wanted to do for this class, but in just talking about them with you all, my creativity went a different direction. So let your spontaneity soar with your creativity, right? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've done a little tray that's half aqua and has half sprinkles. What I originally had intended to do was use the black and go in and draw lines on this side. Maybe I'll do both. Hmm. Yeah, maybe let's do that. So I'm going to take the good old fashioned marker from my last project, and I think I'm going to go in and add little accent lines.
There we go. Let's get it one more right here. So, like I said, one of my favorite parts about these two projects is the kind of creative freedom you have. Well, you have creative freedom with anything you do, but there are so many different variations you can do with this, and you can do it so many different ways. So, even if you use it as a gift now for one person, the next person gets something that's unique in its own way. Okay, so I think that's what we're going to do. So, this the paint still needs time to dry, but as you can see, it's a cute little trinket tray. And like I said earlier, um, after, you can even decide to do this after the paint is dry. If you'd like to finish up the edges by using sandpaper or uh, a nail file, um, you can smooth it out that way. So yeah, there we go. And there we go. So in just 50 minutes, look at that. You've got two gifts done, two gifts off your holiday list. So does anyone have any questions? Honestly, after this class, I'll probably think of something else to add and I'll just keep adding. And just a reminder, 24 hours after you add it, add something to this and let it sit before you bake. Same thing with the tray. All right, well, those are our two beautifully done homemade gifts. If anyone has any questions, feel free to pop into the chat. Or if you happen to craft along with us during the class, I'd love to see what you've uh, done. Let's see. All right, there's a question. Can you make the tray have a shiny finish like the mug? So, great question. Um, once the tray is done, you can take, I'd say Mod Podge probably would be the easiest. So Mod Podge is a crafting medium that can be used as a glue or can be used as a um, clear finishing coat, I guess. So you would just take Mod Podge on a clean paintbrush, go over the whole thing. Mod Podge, I believe, comes in glossy and in matte. So take the glossy version and go over the outside and let it dry. For this, because you have to let it sit on itself to dry, I might recommend maybe doing the top with the Mod Podge, letting it dry, and then turning it over and doing the bottom. That's probably the easiest and most simple way, And but they do sell actual varnishes um, for ceramic and clay projects that you can get, but Mod Podge is probably the easiest. So good question. Um, oh, another thing I forgot to mention. When your mug is finished and baked, so I'll take my baked one, um, they are not dishwasher safe. So make sure you hand wash your um, painted mug with love and care and don't throw it in the dishwasher. Otherwise, the paint might scratch off um, and you won't have your pretty design. Um, yes, so there's a question, can you use the oil-based Sharpies on the clay? And that's actually what I did. So this is the same marker that I used earlier in the class to draw on the mug. Um, if you don't have paints or you don't want to use paints in a paintbrush, you can use the, these markers, the oil-based Sharpie paint markers, because unlike normal Sharpies that are permanent markers, these are actually filled with paint and so they will do great in adhering to the clay. As far as coloring it in, this might take a little while if you're just coloring, but say if you wanted to just write a phrase, like a nice uplifting name, like, uh, like or not name, word, like you can just write smile or have a nice day on it. Um, these would work great. Or you can just do or a simple design on the other side, dots, lines, triangles, would work great with these as well. Or flowers, um, another good thing to add. I actually have a folder of like info pictures that I saved and I can also share it with you all when I send out the email, email after this class. Just 
random things I pulled off of Pinterest of design inspo. Um, let's see, do we put it in the regular oven? Yes, so I baked the mug just in my regular oven. I put a piece of foil down just in case. So I put foil down on the grate, put this on top right side up, and it was perfectly fine. It didn't smell weird or um, nothing weird happened. So just stick it in your regular oven. Of course, not at the same time as food or anything else, but just your regular oven. And I think for this one, I might try the longer bake, um, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. But yeah, so 350 for 30 minutes or 250 for an hour and a half to two hours. All right, well, thank you so much for attending everyone. I'll stay on a little bit after I stop the recording to answer any questions and just hang out. Um, Kim will be teaching the next segment of this series next month, so be sure to look out for that and register early. She's got a couple more crafty projects up her sleeve as we get into this holiday season. And speaking of holidays, if you haven't already, we have our annual Healthy Holiday Challenge coming up. Registration is now open, and that begins next month on November 8th. So if you haven't registered already, make sure you get your registrations in. And I will also link that in the email after this class. Um, I'll go ahead and stop the recording, but hang on. Like I said, again, thank you so much for being here and spending your Friday afternoon with me.